What's going on everybody? This is DJ Recipe here back with another video for you guys. Today's video is about RPMs, pitch control, and just a little bit uh, of an overview of how the speeds work on a turntable. Some of you may already have this knowledge and experience, but there's others who are coming into this hobby and they're very interested in how this works and they may not be familiar with uh, how all these things work. So I'm hoping to shed some light here based on my experiences over the years. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes I wish I knew this information earlier, but uh, it's always a great experience learning these things and educating myself about these. So i um, just going to give a quick overview today and possibly a little bit of history on uh, vinyl sizes. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. Um, the turntable that I'm using here for today's example is the Audio-Technica ATLP 120X USB. This is a great budget um, machine here for uh, beginners or even experienced users. It's basically a replica of the Technics 1200. Uh, it's a little bit uh, lower quality in terms of build. This is plastic. The tech Technics is metal. Uh, the torque on the te Technics is a little bit higher as well. But uh, this will do the job if you want to get into mixing or scratching or even audio production. Uh, it's a pretty good turntable, in my honest opinion. Uh, the layout is pretty much similar to, to the, uh, the 12, 1200. I did upgrade the needle. This is uh, Ortofone, Ortofen. <laughs> Apologies if I pronounced that incorrectly, but uh, this is the Reloop Black. It's a great needle stylus for scratching and mixing, and it's been holding up great for me. It's pretty pretty uh reliable so for today's video if you're following along make sure that your lever arm is up i'm just going to move this out of the way so you guys can see the pitch control here and uh, i i have a guard on my stylus just so it doesn't scratch on the mat so somebody asked me the other day what are all these dots so there's a reason for these uh, i mean it looks it looks pretty sick it looks it looks cool but there's also a reason for this if you if you take a look on this side, I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. Right over here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Perfect. So you've got four rows of dots. One, two, three, four. And then over here, you've got a little diagram that shows you what these are. Now, on the Techniques 1200, you're going to see a slightly different layout. Instead of this, you're going to see plus six. 3.3, 0, and minus 3.3. Uh, I'll throw, uh, you should see a diagram up there for you right now explaining that or what it actually looks like. So for this model here, these are indicating what the speeds of the platter should be when it's spinning. And you should see the dots being stationary or static. So let's go ahead and turn this on. So right here, you notice there's a light. That's called a stroboscopic light. This is a actually this is a strobe light that's actually flashing at I believe 120 times per second, which uh, the equivalent that to that is about 60 hertz, which is the refresh rate that our eyes can see. So that's the reason why that's there. So let's go ahead and start this. I've set this at 33, and let's hit the start. So. You can see here the third dot, third row of dots is 33, one, two, three. You can see that the dots on that row are static. That means that it's playing at 33. So if I was to switch that to 45, one, two, three, four, that's the last row of dots. You can see the 45s are static. That means that it's calibrated for 45. We also got a 78 speed. If you press these together, You'll see it speed up, give it a second. There you go, the top row, is static. You look here, 78. That means it's playing at 78 RPM. So let's go ahead and put this back to 33. So right now that's set to 33. The third line showing, that's great. That means that it's calibrated correctly. If you see that light, uh, like it's kind of jumping, the circles are getting bigger and smaller. That means that you're platter and your your tempo range needs to be calibrated 
um, that's another topic that uh, I'm not going to go over here today. There's plenty of YouTube videos. Um, I'm sure if you search your model, you can find a calibration video that may be very helpful for you. So um, now if you look on this side of the turntable, you've got your pitch and tempo range. This allows you to slow down and speed up the platter. So this specific model has a quartz lock, which means that if you move this up or down, if you want to find the exact speed at which you set, it'll always click back into the zero position. Uh, for those who don't know, quartz, quartz is actually the real quartz crystal that's uh, used as crystals and healing properties. Um, because it has uh, the ability to hold a frequency. So they use that in a lot of electronics. If you see quartz, that's that's what that means. So there, there is actually real quartz crystals being used in these machines to hold that frequency. So I believe the Techniques has the percentage range similar to this unit. There's a 8% and a 16%. Basically what that means is you're you're allowed to um, it, it it allows you to adjust the speed within a range of eight percent negative and positive and if you switch it to sixteen percent it gives you a greater range of how much you you can adjust the tempo and speed so you so you can speed it up and slow it down a little bit further so that's pretty much what that does over there so let's go back over here we're spinning at thirty three let's go ahead and slow down. You can see the dots start to move. They're not static anymore. That means that it's being slowed down. And you can see visually, this is actually a great visual aid. Um, a lot of times if something's broken, you know, the, you don't have a quartz lock or you're, you're mixing on the go and you need to find the, the right speed for this, uh, you can just look at this and adjust uh, your speeds on the right side here to figure it out. So let's go ahead and put that back at zero so now it's at 33 so i just want to go back and touch base to the uh, the techniques um layout here there you'll you'll see a plus six 3.3 zero and 3.3 3 .3. all that's saying is if if the dots are static in any any one of those positions it means that it's either 3.3 .3 or plus six faster than your selected speed or minus 3.3 .3 slower. And you would just adjust it on the right hand side there to get your desired speed. So I may have mentioned this already before that um, RPMs mean rotations and revolutions per minute. So I'm just gonna go through here and give you guys a little history on the platter size, the record sizes and speeds and how they came about. Um, so basically, the slower a record turns, the worse the audio is. So in order to get the best sound possible, records need to turn at higher RPMs. So when a, a record turns faster, the amount of information it can hold is reduced. Even if information is pressed into a vinyl, uh, sorry, even, even if more information is pressed into a vinyl, it's still read in the same amount of time. This is why 45s are usually single tracks. Um, I believe back in 1877, Thomas Edison created the first phonograph. I'm going to throw a picture up here for you guys. This, uh, these phonographs had to be hand cranked and cranked at a consistent speed. Um, so, and you know, that was a very difficult thing to do, but, uh, users generally tried to keep the crank around 80 RPM. Um, so I don't know, can you, can you imagine cranking a record by hand so that you can hear your favorite tracks? I mean, that's some serious, uh, ambition and, uh, you know, phonographs also could only hold about five minutes worth of playback. In, uh, 1888, I believe a fellow named Emil Berliner, uh, email, email, don't know how to pronounce his name, but basically he created the first record. And uh, he also created the first record player. And his device was able to have an electric motor, which uh, played back a speed between 70 and 80 RPM. This is how the 78 RPM that you see on these turn, 
turntables have. Uh, that's how they came about. Also, also that that speed actually created uh, excellent playback quality, um, but it resulted in very limited playback time, which was approximately three minutes per side. So, um, thirty three RPM records eventually became the standard around nineteen forty eight, as record companies liked the fact that it cost less and you know it could fit more audio into the vinyl. As years went by. 78 speeds eventually became less of a production and uh, 33 and 45 speeds were most practical as it was a good balance of playback time and quality. This is why most uh, record players only have 33 and 45 speeds, but there are record players that do have all three, including 78, this being one of them. So uh, also for the sizes, guys, uh, 33 uh, RPM records are usually 12 inch. And uh, that that equates to actually 33 and one third, which is uh, 33.3 RPM. So if you see like 33 and one third on a record, that's actually 33 speed. You don't need to tune it, uh, you know, to get one third or whatever. That is 33. They've just kind of rounded it off. And 45 is actually 45.11 RPM. And those are seven inches. And 78 is actually 78.26 RPM. And those are usually come in a 10 to 12 inch size. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. And that's a history lesson there for you guys. I also wanted to mention that uh, this pitch control is also used for mixing and matching your speeds um, for the next track. So for example, if you have a track playing at 128 BPM, which is like your standard dance house music uh you got another track coming in at 130 you would use this to slow down your track um and try to match your your uh, your bars in and uh there are ways of uh, manipulating the platter to slow it down and speed it up also uh you know like manipulating with your hand you can slow it down this way or you can twist and turn here um i'm not going to get into that for this video uh i may do another post for that just to explain that but yeah, this is pretty much it and hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh yeah i'm i'm learning every day as well too so if i missed anything or you know if there's something you guys want to add please do so in the comments appreciate it and uh have yourself a good one this is dj recipe always got something cooking